Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today we are going to do another pick a card reading and this time you're asking who has their eye on you. Hence why I have some eyeballs drawn out here. They're a little creepy I will admit but today all you have to do is ask your spirit guides, your higher self, who has their eye on me and select whichever card pile you feel most drawn to and that will give us some indication about who's kind of checking you out who has the feely wheelies for you okay now for the majority of you this reading will be in a more romantic context like who is looking at you in a romantic light but this could also sometimes show up in a more platonic light or just feeling impressed type of light you know what i'm saying so like anyone who is really just acknowledging you at this time and maybe they are letting you know maybe they aren't letting you know just whoever is just paying attention to you kind of watching you from a distance or close up <laughs> Who are they? We have pile one, two, three, and four. You can pause now to select your pile and let's dive right into it. Group number one, nice to have you here. You selected this eyeball. So let's see who has their eye on you. The first card out is the unicorn. Okay, this person is not a normal, typical person. So right off the bat, I could tell you that this person isn't what I would call a normie, which is like somebody who dresses normal, acts normal. You ever just meet someone and you're like, oh my gosh, you're such a background character. I mean, like everyone has their own love and light. Everyone has their own magical qualities, yes, but like whoever has their eye on you is not like your typical person, if that makes sense. The unicorn is a very mythical, magical being. And so this person who has their eye on you is somebody who is really beyond their time, if that makes sense. I I feel like when the unicorn spirit comes out as kind of like a representative of the soul of whoever it's talking about, it kind of tends to show people who are really one of a kind, really unique, and somebody you will not encounter every single day. You know, the unicorn kind of goes beyond all man-made constructs. This might be somebody who is non-binary. This might be somebody who is psychic and spiritual. This might be like a literal unicorn, which is a phrase in the polyamorous community, which represents somebody who is like bisexual and wants to date more than one person at a time, like wants to date a couple. Um, so th this unicorn person is just somebody who is very much living at the most magical equinox of all of the beautiful things in life, okay? They have equal amount feminine, masculine qualities. They have equal amount light and dark, spiritual and scientific, right-brained, left-brained. Like, this person is just somebody who is not common to come by in the best way possible. So this is a really awesome person. Um, I like this person for you. Let's see some more energies. We have hostilities coming in. We have door to value. We have the temple path reversed, which is a very spiritual card. And we see some spirit guides all around this path. This person has some um, harsh feelings surrounding I feel like where you're at in your connection thus far I feel like this connection with you like however they present in your life um, I feel like it's not quite where they would want it to be at okay so for example if you group number one are single this unicorn person might not really like um, the fact that they're not closer to you or let's say this is somebody you're in like a situationship with they might want something more something less I don't know uh, for a lot of you guys this is something more though that they want but they see a lot of value in you as a person which is why they have their eye on you they think that you are just this regal um, being this and I feel like they view you as somebody who's one of a kind somebody who is really rare to come by and with the hostilities card I feel like you almost bring out their shadow aspects their inner hostilities their jealousies their Codependencies, you know, I feel like through meeting you or through observing you They really really enjoy you. They really like you and it actually brings up some darker energies within them Because I feel like on the surface like on a normal day like when they're interacting with people They're totally cool calm collected But they have like I'm just telling you right off the bat like they have a lot of feelings for you And so it kind of resurfaces some inner turmoil some inner issues that they need to go over in order to really 
understand this connection and make the most of this connection. Does that make sense? And so like, I don't know, I feel like there's just something about you and your power and your, you, you strike me as somebody who is not traditional in the way you approach relationships or life as a whole, like you're very unique, you're this unicorn person as well. And they see a lot of value in that, but at the same time, they can't pursue this connection in a traditional way, or they can't pursue their feelings for you in a traditional way. There's something about the connection, the energy cord that lies between you and this person that is very unique, that hasn't been done before, okay? I hope this makes sense. Like, this isn't going to be a traditional relationship that we're talking about here. And if you feel like this isn't your person that we're asking about and you're like, no, it's super traditional, then maybe you selected the wrong pile because I'm seeing some unusual circumstances in this connection. Um, not in a bad way, just in a different way. We have Make It Gods, um, which is all about releasing the idea of my and s approaching things from like the relationship, the money, the job, and freedom arrives when you do that. There's no grasping. So yeah, I feel like whoever selected group number one, this is a very unusual relationship because either you, the other person, or both of you are trying to let each other be as independent as possible. You're trying to let each other, you know, be your own selves. You know how like in a traditional relationship, there's like this sense of ownership, entitlement, and monogamy, like you are mine, you're not allowed to look at other people, you're not allowed to touch other people, you're not allowed to do this, that, the third, like we're spending every day together, like you know how traditional relationships have that kind of like strict structure? I feel like there's an aspect of this connection that's very free, and maybe it's completely undefined right now. Maybe your connection with this person um, has no definition, it has no label, and so that kind of loose freedom can be difficult for some people to handle. It can be difficult for some people to grasp and understand. It can bring up some inner hostilities, some jealousies, some things like that. Like there's a high level of freedom that you have and that this person has that is completely unique. And, and so I don't know, I just feel like your person approaches you, approaches this connection, um, rather than trying to like own you or have you own them or like have this relationship kind of limit your freedoms. I feel like this per person really admires your freedom and wants to keep that. And they also admire their freedom and want to keep that. So they definitely view you as like a free bird, as somebody who cannot be pinned down, somebody who cannot, they don't want to you know, force you to become like a caged bird, for example. I keep seeing this image of a caged bird and, you know, we see birds out in the wild and they're so beautiful, they're so free, they can fly wherever they want and they have their their mates, they have their families and they migrate. Whereas if you keep a bird in a cage, and I'm not against bird ownership because I used to have birds myself, I used to have society finches, but I, I'm all I'm saying is like, there's a difference between a free bird out in the tropics and, you know, one that has to sit in a cage all day long. And I feel like your person really admires you from afar, if that makes sense. And they don't want to free you or they don't want to, they do want to keep you free. They don't want to like cage you in and change all these beautiful qualities that they love about you, you know? So this person is really like really intelligent and I feel like they, you know, they understand that freedom is beauty. They understand that relationships and love can be this freeing thing. It doesn't have to be something that we have to put labels or definition on. Your person might be one of those people that like hate labels, hate definitions. Um, and you know, there might be some trauma associated with that. So like at the highest vibrating level of who this person is at a core, like their highest self, there are somebody who doesn't like labels or confinement, but they're still open to love and beauty and intimacy to unfold in a very natural and elegant way. But on like a lower shadow aspect of their personality, if they're operating more from their shadow rather than their light, this is somebody who is like commitment phobic. This is somebody who, you know, kind of makes situations and relationships confusing because what they're trying to say is that they don't want to limit your freedoms or their freedoms if that makes sense, you know? I'm, I'm getting a lot of like openness about this. So like they don't want you to like be monogamous to them and then be monogamous to you. This is only gonna apply for a few people guys. Um, so take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. However, I'm just getting this overall sense of like, if you're dealing with somebody who has resisted putting a label on your connection, if that's who this is, 
they definitely have their eye on you okay light aspect of that is a very highly vibrating beautiful relationship where you're both free to be who you want to be you know free to create a career or be a family person free to you know see whoever you want talk to any friends you want like this person wouldn't dream at least their higher self wouldn't dream of putting you in a cage and telling you what to do like they want you to have the friends you want to have if you want to go flirt with somebody else go ahead and flirt with somebody else like that's their higher self operating they're this unicorn being who is just all about freedom because freedom is magic freedom allows your fullest self to unfold and it's like i said this person is not normal this person is not of this time they're beyond their time this is a concept that a lot of people are going to understand in the future, but it is not something that the majority of people understand now, the ability to be free in a connection, like completely free, like even platonically. Your best friend is allowed to have other friends, for example, okay? Your person doesn't want to control you. They don't want to take that freedom away. Now, if they are operating out of that shadowy aspect, they're still themselves, but they haven't fully developed to the point where they can like put this in words that make sense. So, I don't know. I feel like for some of you guys, your person might be operating out of shadow where they might be coming off as non-committal or coming off as um, not wanting to put a label or on anything, keeping things in confusion. But I feel like their higher self is driving that idea, that concept, but the execution is very poor if that's the case, okay? But the overall spirit and energy of this person is somebody very beyond their time even if they can't really put it into words in a graceful way right now but they want to they really respect freedom and they really want you to be your free self they want to be their free self and they think that the most beautiful types of relationships in life are two people who are in this relationship because they want to be in it not because they're forced to not because they have this commitment hanging over their heads your person might also be somebody who doesn't believe in the institution of marriage okay that would be for some of you guys or if they do believe in marriage um they believe in like an open marriage or like they believe that it's okay to get divorced or you know they're just a very like um free-flowing person and they really like they respect freedom beyond all else they don't want to grasp they don't want to force they don't want to um, you know, put anything in a cage, you know, this person was born to be free and they want you to be free. So yeah, we also have truth coming out, honesty, very good. And here we have that bird imagery that we saw earlier when everything is done in an offering, the act of speaking, you get shown when to talk and when to be silent. Your words come from silence, not fear. You do the talking, Lord, take me over and speak through me. Yeah, so I feel like for some of you guys, there might be like a push and pull in communication here. Um, but there, I, I am getting a sense that there is a nice balance. So especially with the temple path reversed, um, I feel like your person is generally an honest person. Okay, they're an honest person, but they might struggle at times with the push and pull of communication like there might be days where they're quite silent and then there might be other days where they don't stop talking <laughs> and same thing with you like there might be days where you're feeling a little bit more withdrawn and then there's days where you just can't stop talking um so that's very interesting but i feel like your person is very truthful very um honest and i don't think they have any negative intentions however i i will say like one thing to look out for uh, group number one, if you're interested in this person in a romantic light and you want something deeper, more committed, more structured with them, that's something you're really going to have to work um, with them on and be honest about, you know, how you can have something structured and committed while still allowing freedom to ensue. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I feel like there's some communication that needs to happen here. We also have self-sufficiency. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, guys. Like, freedom, self-sufficiency, they're a really big deal for this unicorn person. And I feel like they view you as somebody who is free, who is self-sufficient or working on your self-sufficiency. They view you as this powerful creature. Like, this person genuinely likes you for you, and they do not dream of changing anything about you. So there is this level of respect that this person has for you. Like, they don't want to change you. They don't want to force you into anything. Like, they really do love you for you. <laughs> the ultimate self-sufficiency is relying on God. It doesn't mean hiding in a cave and saying, I don't need people. Instead, it's saying, God is my source or universe, spirit, whatever. And I am willing to receive all the help, love, and support that wants to come. So I feel like your person is willing to receive um, 
any amount of love that you're offering them <laughs> they're willing to receive any amount of attention that you give them but there's this like kind of fearful um energy in the background where they're like afraid to like force themselves on you or like they're afraid to be overly um forward with you when it comes to their feelings because it's just like this person has almost too much respect for you <laughs> to the point where they're not just gonna like take this relationship into their own hands like i feel like group number one if you really like this person there might be some aspects of this relationship where you're really gonna have to like you know s step up and be the leader here because it's not that they have poor leadership skills it's not that they're not assertive it's just that they i feel like this person looks at you and then they think to themselves, I'm never going to find somebody like group number one. And I do not want to mess anything up. I do not want to change group number one at all. I want them to be their valuable self. Like they really, really like you. They really respect you. And they think that you're a unicorn as well. They think that you are like one in a million. I'm never going to find somebody like this again. And they are accurate in that group number one. They're completely accurate in that. And so they have their eye on you. Um, and I do feel like they don't they're not currently like super comfortable or you're not super comfortable with where this connection is at right now so for example like if you are just dating in a situationship have unclear definitions i feel like they want this bigger sense of of intimacy you know what i'm saying like they want more but at the same time I feel like this connection is kind of moving in divine timing with the Make It Gods card because they do, ha like this connection will bring up some insecurities, some hostilities, some inner turmoils um, that need healing. Okay, so I would say like if this is moving forward, but it's moving forward slowly, um, that's good. Okay, now if it's not moving at all, then we have some questions there for that, obviously, like why isn't it moving forward? But I do feel like because the two of you have this really big respect for each other this big sense of freedom self-sufficiency individuality that you don't want to take away from each other um it is important to be honest and communicate things to each other which i feel like this person is capable of that and it is important to kind of take things day by day and when insecurities come up it's important to work on them on your own and work through any hostilities on your own before really attacking the other person you know i feel like it's a really big fear in their mind that if they move things too forward with you or if they put themselves in a vulnerable position with you like for example drinking too much or moving things too fastly or hanging out with you all the time what if that brings up some insecurities some hostilities and they kind of take it out on you instead of like going within and working through this does that make sense? So if they've been like not distant, but like kind of distant, know that it's because they're working through their own inner tur turmoil. So I feel like it's like you hang out with this person and you bring up some issues within them. Like they get really jealous, like, oh, what are they doing in their free time? Like, why, why aren't they like talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And they understand, they acknowledge that that's not a healthy feeling. And so they try to work through that feeling on their own. Um, and they try to, because they want to treat you with respect, you know what I'm saying? So if you feel like they've been slightly distant, but like not really distant, um, especially after you hang out with them, that could be why. They're just trying to work through these more negative feelings on their own. Um, I don't know. I feel like one of the problems with this connection, though, is having them realize, like, they can talk to you about these issues that are coming up for them if they're not already like it's totally safe it's totally okay for them to open up to you and be like hey i'm just letting you know that like sometimes i get a little jealous or sometimes i really question where this is going or sometimes i really want more blah 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 like they can talk to you about that and i don't think they fully realize that just yet um they might have a problem with like uh, self-disclosure or uh, they might have a problem with just you know understanding that they can come to you for anything if they can because I feel like you are somebody that they can come to for help or just share some of their struggles internally with you but I feel like this unicorn person this person that has their eye on you is so used to being like an outcast so used to being so different from everybody else they kind of have this um, tendency to go within whenever they have an issue anyways because for their whole life they've been relying on themselves and so I think there might be some slight some slight issues with this person um like ever so slightly they could be an avoidant attachment style person I don't think it's a huge problem. If you don't think it's a huge problem, then it's probably not a huge problem. Okay, again, you're going to have to take things um, to your own discernment here. Use your own intuition, but 
yeah i just feel like sometimes um if they get jealous if they get angry over something and they know that like they shouldn't be lashing out on you there's you they have no right to like try controlling you from that feeling they'll go within and resolve that feeling which is very emotionally mature but they need to understand that they can also communicate about these things in a healthy honest accurate way and so I feel like you're kind of awakening within this person the fact that they don't have to be alone because it's like a unicorn in the woods locking eyes with another unicorn and they're like, oh my god, like, I never see unicorns and here's a unicorn standing right there, like, we're, we're the same species, we're, we're both equally weird, mystical, magical beings, like, this is amazing. And so that's why they don't want to change you and that's why they don't want to change themselves. It's just a matter of, like, integrating these two unicorns, okay, you're two magical, mystical beautiful individuals very unique in your own ways powerful as well and so it's kind of like how can i honor this other person and this connection and not you know take a crap on their freedom if that makes sense okay now i would like to get some other additional traits and guys this is a part where you're really gonna have to take what resonates and leave anything that doesn't because these are gonna get really specific and so if everything in this reading resonated with you and like maybe one of them these cards don't resonate then like you know don't try to force it to happen okay um but if it does then take that as like you know more confirmation that this is your reading okay so first trait we have light skin regardless of ethnicity so they might have light skin uh we have yep androgyny or non-binary i think i spelled that wrong but we saw that earlier here um and guys even if they're not like um you know non-binary um, they can also just be somebody who dress, who's not afraid to like dress however they want. So like, for example, I identify as a woman, but I wear masculine clothes sometimes. So that would be like an example. We have works with hands or body. This is somebody who they either have a hobby, um, or a job where it's very physical, very hands on. We have narcissist or toxic. I feel like this is something that they probably have dealt with in the past, or if they are operating out of their shadow side, this is something that they currently have. Like, you know, to the point where, like we, we saw earlier that like, um, that uh, uh, avoidant attachment style, um, overly self-sufficient and also like afraid of commitment and they don't realize like, it's not really fair. Like keeping relationships in confusion, like they don't realize that that is a little bit, um, toxic depending on who you're asking okay they don't that would be if they're operating out of their shadow though because this person it really depends on who's watching guys you have to take what resonates they could be at different levels of their healing journey i, I feel like their higher self like is not narcissistic or toxic at all and i really don't feel like even at their lower selves i wouldn't necessarily call them a narcissist okay but i feel like if they are operating out of their shadow self they might not realize how kind of keeping the, in the pursuit of maintaining both of your independence they might keep things in a very confusing territory for you they just might not be able to see how that can kind of get in the way of your connection you know what i'm saying all right we have beard or hairy we have thin and we have mature tendencies yes i saw that all throughout this reading very mature person especially like emotional maturity so if any of those resonate with you then there you go we're gonna get some more traits here i haven't used this deck i made this deck a while ago for the um who's stalking your social media reading so let's see we have a little creepy okay they might be creeping up on your social media without really saying anything or like maybe you know what i'm getting from this they might not be like completely creepy but for some of you guys this could be um like okay so like you hang out with them and it's like really awkward and they kind of have like a prolonged eye contact and you're like oh god this is a little weird <laughs> but they can be totally like adorable totally fine as well we have stranger okay so there is definitely I, I definitely don't think that this is like a super super old relationship like you've been dating for years and years and years i feel like there's still aspects of this connection where you do feel like strangers at times. You do feel like there's, it's lacking that intimacy because while you're both independent, I, I just feel like sometimes they, this person needs to learn that they can be self-sufficient and independent while still being in a super deep connection with you or while being committed. Like you can be committed to somebody, um, you know, agree to move forward with them in life while still maintaining certain degrees of independence. And all you have to do is communicate about it, okay? We have toxic X. Okay. Now, I don't know why, 
for the majority of you, I am viewing this as they have a toxic ex, not like this is a toxic ex. Although for some of you guys, this whole thing might be resonating for somebody who's from your past because this is the second time narcissist or toxic came out. So some of you guys watching, this person that we talked about might be somebody from your past, like a past situationship that wanted to keep you confused, not like, maybe not on purpose, but like they really had a hard time um, communicating the ideal that they had for themselves where they're independent, you're independent, you're not monogamous, but you can still be committed and intimate and in a relationship with each other. I feel like that's what they wanted, okay? But they had a really awful time communicating that and so it, it came out really bad really wrong led to some hostile feelings between you guys either on probably from you to them and so yeah but they still have their eye on you they're still watching you they're still kind of stalking you on social media now that's for some of you guys for others of you um this might not be somebody from your past they might have a toxic ex which is why um or like some type of toxic or difficult past which made them really value their independence like we saw earlier um they might be hyper independent because they had to learn how to really take care of themselves and be hyper independent but they could be a total mature person i feel like this person for the majority of you is good they have good intentions they're mature um they just you know have some things to work on and you know it's kind of like we can't just view people in black and white okay we can't just say this person's amazing they're great they're amazing or like this person's super toxic and awful like leave them i don't view people like that okay so whoever this person is they are unique they view you as a unicorn as well like they're never going to meet somebody like you again that's why they have their eye on you um you know they have mature tendencies and they have a mature ideal that they want for their relationships, which does not fit the usual, the usual theme, the usual relationship structure. And so at times they might have a hard time navigating what exactly they want and putting that into words. So interesting. We have now these signs, they don't have to be their signs. I would say like this would probably be their sun moon rising or they give off these tendencies. We have Gemini. There's that intelligence. There's that um, communication, that air quality, that very, very much air quality person. I see this person having a lot of air qualities, you know, very intelligent, very much in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like they're a unicorn. They really like have an ideal type of connection relationship that's not codependent that's not like we must get married live our whole lives together you're never allowed to look at somebody else like that's just not who they are okay and i i will say firsthand i have a gemini venus and that this is like exactly that like i am more attracted to somebody who is free and who isn't like clinged on to me for dear life um i i enjoy like freedom and connection like go ahead and flirt with people you know what i'm saying like i don't care so they might be like that as well. We have Taurus coming out, earth sign here, some earth sign tendencies, loving food, loving snuggles, you know, fix, all that good stuff. Taurus is really the sign of like high quality things. This person enjoys high quality people. I, with these two signs as well, I feel like this person is not attracted to people who they don't think can have an intelligent conversation with them like they're not attracted to people who are significantly below their intelligent level if that makes sense like they find intelligence very attractive which is why they find you very attractive group number one because you're super smart um and so i don't know i just feel like and i feel like there is like a, not not narcissism but like maybe um they have a bit of an ego <laughs> sometimes like one of those intelligent egos you know when people are like super smart and you know i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say there but let's move on to some tarot this reading i i thought this pick a card um video would be super short it turns out not but so i don't know what i'm gonna ask guys what should we ask let's ask what their intentions are for you like where do they want things to go with you what do they plan on doing okay what are their intentions what is group one's person's intentions for group one Four of Cups. I feel like they're having a really hard time putting into words exactly what they want for you. That's what I'm seeing with that Four of Cups coming out. Let's get another one. And I with I, I think the, the imagery on the Four of Cups is significant too because it's like the universe is offering them this connection. I feel like you pretty much, you know, 
offered yourself to them if that makes sense or like you think you are like you know bring, being pretty straightforward like i offered you my cup of love um so why are you just sitting there not taking it or like i offered you my um my love my attention this is you to them okay like here i am i'm existing like why aren't you like taking me out on date like wh why aren't you wanting to put like a label on this why what are we doing here what are we doing here we have nine of swords this person's very confused they're overthinking things overthinking labels definitions things like that uh we have the ace of pentacles reversed and again i feel like the universe is kind of like offering them like here's group number one unicorn person like take it or leave it you know um we have the fool here so this is a new beginning this is a really good card a new beginning led by their intuition so when i see this card in this reading it really reminds me of the fact of like you know you might not logically understand why you are really drawn into somebody but you just can't stop thinking about them and your intuition just keeps telling you like something's there something's there something's there and so this connection they really have this nagging intuition and you might have this as well to keep talking to this person let's see where this goes despite all the difficulties despite having to figure out like how you're going to navigate this weird intellectual futuristic um relationship dynamic that y'all want how are you going to navigate um some of the jealousies and harsher things that come up in relationships especially if this person has a toxic ex okay i have some toxic exes myself some abusive exes myself and let me tell you something group number one it is so difficult to start talking to someone new it's so difficult to start a new relationship when you have a past with toxic people because everything that's normal can come off as a red flag if that's your history so like somebody moving too slowly in a connection for example that would like trigger my intuition and saying like this person's just trying to lead me on even if they're just a little bit slower moving than i am in a connection or if somebody like gets me an expensive gift early on i'm like this is love bombing this is abuse you know like it really like when you've been in a toxic situation every little thing can come off as a red flag and so this person might be taking their time because they're trying to use their discernment to figure out what is love what is a red flag okay they're trying to really heal from their past which is why they might be taking things slower which is why they might not want to put a definition on things yet which is why they might be you know showing a lot of interest in you and slowly moving this forward and being truthful with you but you know if you, if there is some resistance there it's because they're doing a lot of inner healing work okay now if there's like no forward movement you know let's not ignore that either you know you have to really look at your own situation this is a general pick a card reading we also have king of wands reversed i feel like your person is not used to being in a position of leadership they're not used to taking the wheel taking the initiative and also they just might not be the best at it if we're being honest like they might just be a more passive person um you know going about their own thing i'm getting like a bit of a loner energy from this unicorn i'm getting like um I've always been misunderstood my whole life. I've always been different. And so I've really learned how to be self-reliant. I've learned how to really just be on my own. And so sometimes it's hard for me to acknowledge like, oh, somebody wants to stand by me. Like somebody wants to have a thing with me. So I don't know. I, I, I'm getting some, uh, and with the little, a little creepy card coming out with the King of Wands here in reversed as well. I just, I feel like they might be a little shy. Okay. Or they might be somebody with not so assertive tendencies okay so take with that what you meant that is your reading this person has their eye on you group number one i hope this um whoever really just popped into your mind when we did this reading that's definitely who it is okay so thank you guys for joining me like this video comment your thoughts and feelings down below i'd love to hear like who you think this person is like don't give their name or anything but you know share your story spread some love to other group number one people and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell to be notified every time i post a video and i'll see you later bye group number two let's see who has their eye on you so they are being represented by the black egg all of these big spiritual cards are coming out of the spirit animal deck here today black egg is a very mature person guys i love this for you the last pile had a very mature person this is a very mature person this is somebody who speaks the whole truth nothing but the truth all truth nothing else okay they hate small talk they want to get straight to the point okay no little lies this is somebody who very much values truth honesty and accuracy okay uh for some reason i'm getting like law okay like the law in my mind so for some of you guys this person could be like a paralegal a lawyer 
um, some some level of law enforcement, military, like, or maybe even public speaking, writing, singing, acting, anything that involves the voice, the truth the law, honesty, like all of those things are supported by this black egg spirit. Okay, this just represents raw, whole, authentic truth. And your person is somebody who very much values that within you and within others. So that could be part of the reason why they have their eye on you. We have the thinking woman. Mm, yeah, another reason they might have their eye on you is because you're smart. I'm getting like this this vibe, okay? Um, this image that you are Belle from Beauty and the Beast and you're just trying to mind your business, read your books, live your life. Like you're kind of oblivious to the people around you because you're not like everybody else in the sense that you get caught up in drama and you're su super focused on the lives of others. Like you're just really doing your own thing in life, okay? You just wanna do you. You don't want drama, like you're, you just want to do you, you know, you're probably that type of person who's always out here Googling stuff, always reading a book or learning something new or just trying to get to the truth of a situation, okay? You probably hate small talk, you probably hate really stupid surface level things. And you know, the whole town thinks like you're the bomb.com. You know, you have plenty of people watching you group number two because you're hot. Like, what can I say? You're attractive. And you have this energy, this aura about you that's just like, don't mess with me. But like in a good way, like in a confident way. Like, because you're, you're somebody who genuinely like loves yourself, okay? You don't waste your energy on stupid stuff. Like, I think that people who lie, who gossip, who cheat, who, you know, have nothing better to do but get into everybody else's business. Like, that's not attractive, you know? Whereas you're just doing your own thing. You're pouring your energy into yourself, into your life, and into things that are worth pouring your energy into. And that's what makes you super duper attractive. So I'm getting this vision that you're like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. The whole town thinks you're hot. You know, you probably have tons of Gaston people looking at you. And you know, there is like one person who might like really genuinely and there might be a few people who really genuinely like you not because you're just surface level beautiful but they understand it's because you're intelligent you you have depth to your soul okay i don't know what side of i i feel like this person who has their eye on you they see deeper within you than all the other people who have their eye on you because you have many people who have their eye on you like let's be real like i'm getting this vision that you are somebody who is well liked for your beauty and for your surface level stuff you know like you might be really attractive <laughs> or like you might dress really nicely or have like a really charming personality but this person sees a lot deeper into you and for some reason off the bat i just feel like for the majority of you, this person who has their eye on you might not be in some type of connection with you yet. Okay, like group number one, the majority of the people who watched that group, I felt like their person was like a situationship, a dating scenario, not yet fully committed. Whereas with you guys, I feel like this person might not even talk to you, you yet. Or like they might not have shared their feelings with you yet. This could be like a secret admirer, somebody from your town, like in that... Beauty and the Beast reference, okay? We also have the go <laughs> Goddess of the Moon reversed, which shows a big need to get in tune with your feelings, with your intuition. I feel like this person is very analytical, very intelligent, um, like book smart is what I'm seeing here, and they might not be the most intelligent when it comes to their emotions, how to talk about emotions, and they, uh, like, to be honest, they just might not be that charming or charismatic. Um, to just be able to walk up to you and be like, hey, I have my eye on you. Like, I think you're cute. Like, <laughs> what's up? You know, with Goddess of the Moon Reverse, it shows somebody who really needs to tune back into their emotional, uh, sensitive, impulsive, like intuitive side. Okay. Somebody who's in tune with their inner goddess, the, the moon energy. This is somebody who says, you know what? This feeling is real. Let's explore it. Okay. In reverse, they have this feeling for you. They have their eye on you. They might be out here thinking you're a goddess and everything, but... They're afraid to explore it for some reason. And I feel like it's their mind. They're probably very sharp, very analytical, but then they're overthinking it. Like, oh, they probably don't like me. I don't want to harass them. We have storm warning reversed. There is a lot of 
unspoken feelings here. Oh my gosh, I'm just getting this visual of this big, big storm, black clouds, and this is all the feelings that they have for you that they are just keeping within, and it's like about to burst, it's about to explode. Um, and now I'm getting another visual, like whenever I'm out with my mom, and these types of storms are like in the air, she always says like, that, that sky is gonna burst open at any moment now. And so I, I just feel like this is them, like their feelings for you are so heavy, so strong, that it's just gonna burst open at any moment now. Like they're gonna have to say something if it, if things keep going on the way that they're going on here. Like they're gonna have to be open, honest, accurate. And I think in their own soul, in their own mind, they are aware that like, they can't sit here and say, I love truth, I love people who are honest, and then sit here and not share these emotions with you. So like I said, the stuff is gonna come, come in, like feelings are gonna be declared any moment now. <laughs> this is like a storm of emotions on the verge of just cracking open, okay? And it's gonna f storm down, okay? This is gonna have lots of repercussions, positive or negative, depending on how you feel about them, right? So like, for example, if they show their feelings and you're like, ew, gross, go away. You know, that'll be negative feelings for them, not for you, you're fine. But if it's like positive and you reciprocate these feelings, then I mean that storm can be like the release you guys needed to just really fully dive headfirst into this connection. You know what I'm saying? So we have calmness. They're trying to keep a cool, calm, collected uh, front. This is somebody who is trying to resist their emotions. Why are they trying to resist their emotions? Why? I'm not asking you, I'm just asking, I'm asking them. Like, why are you trying to do it? I don't get, I don't get it. They're, they're trying to kind of like repress or keep their emotions calm. Like they're not letting you know just how much they have their eye on you, how much they really like you. Some of you guys, you might actually know this person and you might actually be talking to them, flirting with them, okay? Like I said, that whole example that like some of you guys, like this person has not shared their feelings for you yet. Um, that might not apply for everybody. Like this might be somebody that you are kind of flirty with, maybe even dating in a situationship with or in a relationship with. I don't feel like a lot of people who select the group number two though are in a relationship with this person, like committed, like boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever you want to call it. Girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, bleh, bleh, tongue twisters. I don't think you're at that stage with this person yet. And I also don't think that every single person who selected group number two is going to reciprocate feelings for this person. I'm just being honest. Like, I feel like they have a lot of feelings for you, no doubt, okay? But for everyone watching, I don't think you're all going to have the same feelings back. So for example, this could be like a coworker. And you might have like an intuitive nudge because like I'm viewing you as this thinking woman, even if you're a man, like eyes are open, you're staring right at them, like you can see them, okay? And with Goddess of the Moon Reverse, guys, you already know, I'm just letting you know now, you already know that this person has feelings for you. You just have to admit it, okay? This could be like, I'm getting an example for some of you guys. This is like a coworker. They're kind of flirty and awkward with you. And you're just like, I just have a feeling that they have a thing for me. Um, yes, this is, yes, they have a thing for you. And they are gonna tell you soon, so prepare yourself just in case you have to reject them. Because in that example that's popping into my head, I see a lot of y'all rejecting the coworker, okay? Or maybe you really like them. And now's the time to prepare. Your intuition is telling you that this person has feelings for you because they are going to come out soon so prepare yourself for like what are you gonna say what are you gonna do you know what I'm saying so very calm though they're trying to keep their emotions contained at this time we have enjoyment striving and pushing makes life into endless hard work the more you're inviting love to take over the more enjoyment comes allow me to enjoy this life dear lord I feel like you're the one who enjoys life, you know? And again, I'm being pushed back to you are Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And she's out here just reading her books, walking down the street, you know, making her little laundry contraption, contra, con wow, <laughs> invention. I don't know if that was in the live action one or if that was in the cartoon, I can't remember. But you're enjoying yourself, you're enjoying your life. And I feel like you're just kind of enjoying life on your own, like bumbling about life, doing your own thing enjoying things right and i feel like they see you from afar and they're like look at group number two just enjoying their life i want to enjoy life with them because i feel like this black egg person the energy that i'm feeling from them is much more serious than your energy like they might just be so analytical so in their head all of the time um just thinking working etc and then you're somebody who is also very intelligent analytical but you're enjoying life you know and so they're like wow i really want a piece of that and this might also just be somebody who you know, hasn't been in a relationship in a while or hasn't really felt that love, that romance in a while and they want to invite that romance back into their life. They're looking at you, they're like, 
Yep, that's the one I want to have that feeling with. <laughs> we have hardship coming in and look, rain imagery. That's the first thing that, like the word didn't even stand out to me. The rain is what stood out to me. Yeah, I feel like it's getting harder and harder day by day for this person to contain their feelings for you. May I embrace what's happening right now as baffling or painful as it is. Help me God to trust where you are guiding me. I am yours. Yeah, no, I really feel this card because I feel like this is how your person's feeling about you. Like, I have no idea what these feelings are. I've never felt this way. This is crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. I have this really big intuitive urge that I can no longer resist anymore that I just have to say or do something about it. Like, even if they're not religious, I feel like they're praying. <laughs> Okay, they're like, please help me God because I, I don't know how to like communicate these feelings. So I feel like your person's kind of like internally freaking out right now because they're getting to the point where they cannot contain themselves anymore. They need to say something to you. And I feel like that really scares them because it, it's hard. Okay, it's hard to open up and open yourself up to rejection. And I feel like your person, the energy I'm getting from them is just somebody who's been single for a while, somebody who hasn't had like a real romantic thing in a while. Like they might've had a thing here and there, but it was probably very short lasting or a very long time ago. Like, I don't know. I'm just getting this energy of somebody who hasn't necessarily been super focused on romance in their life. And now you come along they have their eye on you and they're like, huh? Cause before they had a crush on you, I feel like they were starting to have that feeling like, you know what? Maybe it would be a little nice to uh, have a little romance, a little, you know, a little love into my cold, hard life. I feel like your person might be like a realist, like in a negative way. They might err on the side of pessimism at times for some of you. Now I'm pulling out some traits, okay? Guys, take what resonates with these traits and leave anything that doesn't. There's a lot of them, okay? They might not directly resonate, but if there are any that really stick out to you, take that as a sign, a confirmation from spirit. We have fashionable or aesthetic. This is somebody who probably dresses very nicely or they have a very distinct way of dressing, very distinct aesthetic or like decor. We have outgoing. Okay, interesting. So I wasn't originally picking up that they were outgoing, but maybe for some of you guys that they are. We have entertainer or beauty. And guys, some of these traits might also um, resonate with you. I just want to point that out. If that's the case, you guys might mirror each other in some ways. We have posh slash adult style. There's a lot of traits here in regards to how they dress and their style and like adult and like just being real posh and career. I don't know why. I keep getting this, this idea that they're a career person, um, that they have like, I don't know, like business, analy analytics, mathematics, like uh, I'm just getting the cold, hard truth, like cold, hard fact type of energy here, um, which is my, why they might dress like very posh, very adult, very crisp, clear, minimalism, okay? <laughs> we have straight hair, which kind of, I don't know why, I also, this isn't gonna make any sense, but I correlate straight hair with like minimalism that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. My brain does weird things, makes weird connections at the time. Like why is the number two a gender neutral number, but the number six is like a feminine number. And the number four is masculine. I don't know why my brain does that, but so, <laughs> but straight hair, minimalism. I don't know why they're co co uh, connected. We have creative, mm, interesting. I feel like this person isn't like outrightly creative. Like they probably, they're not giving me like hippie creative, um, you know, wearing sandals in the woods type of vibes. Um, they're giving me more so like crisp, clean, creative. Like for example, if they're a photographer, they're doing like editorial photos, you know, like fashion mag photos, not like um, collage, Pinteresty, uh, <laughs> scrapbook photos. I, does this make sense? Like I'm trying to explain an energy that's so difficult to really put into words. We have tattoos. <laughs> They might be yatted, might not. And we have brown or hazel eyes. Okay, again, take any that resonated uh, strongly with you, leave any that did not. And now we are going to get some more traits. Um, there was a difference in these traits. So that might be like physical traits um, that give it away. This might be like energetic um, personality traits or intentions or whatever. Okay, there's a lot. Someone unexpected, yeah. So I really don't think that this person has admitted their feelings to you yet for the most of you. And 
So yeah, so this might be somebody who you're like, oh wow, I didn't know you felt that way, but prepare yourself, guys. We have a former friend, interesting. So I, I, I really wanna take away the word former here and just say friend. So I feel like this person is friendly with you. They have had a conversation with you. Um, I'm getting like very much like coworker, mutual friend type of vibes here, okay? Like they know you. You have met this person before. I don't think they're a stranger. Mm, interesting. We have school and learning. You guys might have went to school with one another, but I'm also see again, I'm also seeing this as career. You might be a coworker. I don't know. Like somebody you were in some type of organization with or your person might be in school, they might work at a school, um, might be involved in teaching and learning in at some point or you might be into those things. We have stranger. Okay, I literally said they're not a stranger and then the stranger card came out. Why did I know that was going to happen? And yeah, so we have friend and stranger. So this person's an acquaintance. So, which is kind of what I was picking up on anyway. So that's why I'm taking it. You knew each other in the past and were close. Oh, maybe they are a former friend and maybe you're like more so strangers now, which would again make you acquaintances because you know, you already know each other. You were friends, you were extremely close and now you're not as close anymore. So this could be a stranger. That will only resonate with some of you guys though. Um, but for some of you, you have someone from your past that you were close with who has not given up on you and they have the feely wheelies, okay? I don't know why I also just got the message they might have recently got a tattoo or you might have. That might be another sign. I'm not sure. Whew, so many different signs here. Um, so take whatever resonated, leave anything that doesn't from that. Now let's get into the tarot. I don't know what I want to ask. What are their intentions with group number two? I feel like their intention is to keep things calm as long as possible, but I feel like, yep, they're inevitably going to be so uncomfortable with not sharing their feelings with you that they're going to happen. This is the card of like being very, very uncomfortable with where things are at. Okay. Like, mm. hmm. Hmm. Why do they like group number two? That's my question. Why do they like group number two? The moon reversed. This is like a deep spiritual type of love that they have for you. They, like you really invoke something deep within them. You know, this storm within them. We have the queen of wands coming out for why they like you. Okay. You are somebody, they view you as somebody who's like a visionary, a creative, somebody who has their life together. This is the card of managers, leaders, entrepreneurs, creatives, light workers, people who really have a vision for the type of world they want to see, um, who have a vision for what they want their lives to look like. You might also, uh, you know, have cat like qualities or have cats or something of that nature, or maybe be into gardening. Like, I just feel like there's a lot of passion uh, for many different things that you have in life. Okay. And they really enjoy your creativity. They're very attractive to you, attracted to your passion. Okay. Your energy. Like if you feel passionately about anything, that's what they find you attractive. I feel like you feel passionate about a lot of things, group number two, and they are just very attracted to your passionate energy. Yep. Nine of swords. They think about you late at night and it's really starting to bother them that like, they haven't told you the full extent of their feelings. Like they're feeling trapped in their feelings, which is why they're going to burst at any moment now. And they don't understand their feelings either, which is why they're trying to keep calm here. But they're going through a lot of hardship. Um, they're going through difficult times here. I feel like this person is also very lonely. Yeah, four of pentacles came out. They might've been so focused on like their career, their life, like their money. And you know, they thought to themselves, oh yeah, I don't need uh, that intimacy. They, like this person confused, um, they might have confused sex with in real intimacy or maybe they just thought neither were particularly important and so they focused all their energy on their on their money their school their career you know that type of stuff but now they're just like oh my gosh i really need love and because they've been like away from real intimacy for so long you're starting to invoke these really deep feelings within them and they're trying to keep calm because it's a lot okay <laughs> it's a lot uh, and maybe like they're not in the place or your relationship is not in like an appropriate place to share this feelings like especially if there's somebody from your past like they don't know if they can just step right back into your life and be like hey i have feelings for you or if you are co-workers or like co-students or like in that type of mutual friendship group like you share a group with this person in some way again they're trying to keep their calm they're trying to keep their cool because they don't want to overstep boundaries and make things weird just in case you reject them so this person is definitely afraid of your rejection and afraid to like kind of come forward with their feelings which is understandable there is a lot of fear 
involved with that. That's a very brave thing that they're gonna have to do. But with the Fool card, this is really showing me that they are most likely going to listen to their intuition and tell you about their feelings soon. Interesting. I don't know why I'm feeling guided to ask when. When are they gonna come forward with their feelings? Eight of cups. And we have the moon reversed here. Mm. They might not even decide to do this. This is very similar to this. The, everything within them, within their intuition, and we have the goddess of the moon reverse, lots of moons in reverse here. They're not, they're trying to suppress their feelings. They're really trying to suppress their feelings and suppress this gigantic intuitive nudge that they should be sharing their feelings with you. Some of you guys, I'm not gonna lie, they might succeed at suppressing those feelings, but it's only gonna cause mayhem for them and then really bad darkness for them. Nine of swords over here. Um, now for others of you, this eight could be like eight days, eight weeks, eight months. Um, this could also be August. Um, I don't know why that's the eighth month of the year. That's what I'm going with. Eight might be an important uh, number for when they come forward to you with their feelings. Or maybe like if you live in like an eight house or if they live in an eight house uh, in numerology. I should post a video on that. I, I told myself I would do that months ago and then I never did. But yeah, so that's just a fun little message, guys. I'm really bad with um, timing messages. All psychics are actually because timing's always changing. Um, the future's always changing based on our decisions. I feel like they have not made the full decision yet to listen to their intuitive nudge to tell you about their feelings. But if they do, expect them to move forward with that. I, I would say, the majority of you guys watching this person is going to open up about their feelings so expect that expect people from your past um coming back as well and talking to you about how they feel but yeah so that's your reading guys i'll leave it there um thanks for joining me like share comment and subscribe if you have not already and i will see you for the next one bye hello group number three let's see who has their eye on you they are being represented by the shark. Mmm, water energy. They could be Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Interesting. This card is very, very significant to represent your person because the shark spirit really comes out when something is lurking in the depths and not being acknowledged. When we ignore our true feelings, when we ignore um, how we truly feel about a person and what's going on in our hearts and in our minds It really just encircles us and circles us like a shark That thing that we're keeping that secret that we're not exposing that feeling that we're not expressing just keeps Circling around us and around us and around us just taunting us lingering over our shoulders until it is expressed so I don't know, for some of you guys, this person who has their eye on you, like, they're really trying to ignore this feeling. They're really trying to just see if it'll go away, but it's taunting at them. Mmm, they might... And I'm getting, like, an edge of danger to this person. I don't know why I felt guided to say that, but maybe the next cards will show us what that means. We have woman holding a heart reversed. Oh, boy. We have attachment reversed. Mm. We have broken heart reversed. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, first, I'll, I don't know why. First intuitive nudge I'm getting for a lot of you guys. I'm just being honest. This is somebody from your past. This is an ex, somebody whose heart you broke. And for some of you, if that resonates with you, um, I almost wonder, like, are you getting some kind of like creepy energy from this person? Like, they just won't let you go, or maybe you feel like they keep stalking you on social media. You don't know why you have this feeling. Okay, I don't, I don't know, guys. But if, if somebody is actually like stalking you, you need to go to the authorities with that. All right. Now, that's obviously not going to be a problem for every single one of you watching this. I hope not. I hope it's not even a problem for the majority of you. But for some of you, this is somebody from your past who's kind of lurking in your energy field, who just is having a hard time really, truly moving on, letting go. They're still attached. Okay. They still, they wonder, do you still have feelings for me? Um, what are your feelings? What are you up to? What does your daily schedule look like? You know, I'm getting these kind of questions here. Um, interesting. With the shark energy and with woman holding a heart reversed, 
both of these cards are kind of showing an emotional overwhelm, feeling like their feelings for you are overwhelming. And I really am just getting the sense that this person does not ha know how to go about their feelings in um, like a direct way. Their intuition, their higher self is guiding them to be direct about their feelings and just go after it and just tell you how they feel. However, there's like this sense of emotional overwhelm within them that I'm really feeling. And I don't know, I feel like they're having a hard time with their feelings for you. Um, and also I feel like there's some more negative feelings at play when it comes to them keeping their eye on you, if that makes sense, okay? So they, there might be some jealousy, you know, wondering what are you up to? What, do you like me? You know, they might be jealous of you spending time with your friends, with your, if you're in a partnership and this is an ex, like they're jealous of the person you're with now. This can be resentment for either you rejecting them or for the fact that you're not together. This could be somebody who uses like subtle little manipulations to try to get to what they want. I, I just, I'm getting the phrase shark in a water, which is an allusion to something that I heard a monk say once where they were kind of like there's always going to be sharks in the water of life meaning like you're always going to encounter problems with you know d negative feelings um, poverty health issues etc like there's always going to be things in life that keep us on our toes and keep us evolving as a human species right and I feel like this person has this shark like energy like I, I don't think their feelings for you are 100% pure and positive, whoever this is. I'm just being honest. I'm getting a bit of like possessiveness from them, jealousy, uh, manipulation. I really do feel like for the majority of you, the vast majority of you, this is somebody from your past that you have rejected or broken up with. Or maybe, you know, they had their opportunity to be in your life and they screwed it up by being weird and jealous and manipulative and controlling and so you ended things as you should have and you know they're having a hard time getting over that okay they're not used to not getting what they want is what i'm seeing here so mm. let's see i want to read about the broken heart in reverse here the broken heart reversed marks the time of renewal and hope the pain and trauma are behind you now and you can trust that that greater joy is on the way whatever has happened to hurt you in the past you're now free to move on the universe has much better things in store so finish letting go of any residual grief and open your life to your new self-love intention joyous connections will follow i think there's somebody from your past that in the back of their mind thinks that you're gonna get back together and guys i know this sounds creepy but i want you to keep in mind many people in the tarot and spiritual community are also like this okay we all have seen heard of those people who believe in twin flames and you know there might have been an old lover an ex from their past and they're like oh that's my twin flame they have a lot of feeling to do i have a lot of feeling to do but we'll eventually get back together i feel like this per oh sorry <laughs> this person who has their eye on you views you as their twin flame now whether or not you view them that way is beyond the point okay but i think in the back of their head they're still holding out for hope that this connection will come back around, okay? They're hoping for another opportunity with you. And I feel like this person is very, very patient, okay? They're willing to, like if you think about sharks, they swim for miles and miles and miles every single day. They just swim, 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 looking for things to eat. And so I feel like your person almost has this shark-like energy where they're very patient, okay? But for some reason, they're having a hard time letting go of this attachment to you. Which is why they subtly keep their eye on you and kind of like their energy is always kind of within your energy. And I am almost getting that this person might, you might feel like this person is spiritually stalking you. And if you're unfamiliar, this is where like you're just trying to live your life. If you're like a extremely psychic, um, spiritually perceptive, empathetic, work within the spiritual realms, you might know what I'm talking about where for some reason your mind keeps going back to this person and you can feel their energy pulling at your energetic cord and you've been trying to let go of this person you're the one that's been trying to move on from them let them go let them you know find love elsewhere it's like you you've been trying to let this person go i really don't think that this person is a welcome ex i don't think they're somebody you necessarily want to be with i feel like you probably have a lot of love a lot of empathy for them but I think you can also acknowledge, like, she's looking over here, like, they aren't exactly in a place where they can have a healthy connection. 
Um, so yeah, I don't know. This card's actually pretty good. It, um, it indicates a old negative pattern, a relationship, or desperate attitude that is being released. And so I feel like your person is in the process of kind of moving on from you, but they're kind of in the shadow aspect of their healing, of their release where they're like hyper fixating on you if that makes sense they're still keeping their eye on you and i feel like in time they will eventually learn to let you go but interesting um i feel like this person is still trying to develop some healthy techniques to let you go but for right now like i mean just look at these cards guys you have the broken heart reverse woman holding the heart reverse attachment reverse you broke this person's heart i have no doubt in my mind about that and if none of this resonates and like there's nobody in your life like this i would say you might have chosen the wrong pile but you definitely broke this person's heart in some way and you might be thinking to yourself like i gave them the opportunity to love me right and they didn't show up so what do you mean i broke their heart yeah i i still think you broke their heart because i don't think they're like capable and aware of having this healthy connection okay and so they might not view it that way but huh interesting <laughs> Woo! yep we have travel this person might be well traveled they might be at a distance from you they might be from a different region culture etc or maybe when you were talking to this person um you guys were just from different areas like of the world or of the country or wherever you live okay um so we see that there um, I feel like they really think about you when they travel as well. Like, oh, <laughs> this is gonna sound so creepy. What, what if I had so-and-so here with me, like, and I could show them all these different places that I go out to eat and I go on these adventures? Like, what if they were by my side? Or maybe if you're somebody who, like, has an Instagram and you post a lot of travel pics or, like, pictures of you at different ad adventures, um, they're definitely keeping an eye on that, watching those things, all right? Okay, that's just a little confirmation. Self-acceptance. Nothing is more exhausting than endlessly working on yourself. When you offer your whole being fully to love, self-acceptance arises spontaneously. May I rest in oneness, dear divine. I feel like your person really struggles with self-acceptance and their self-esteem, which is why they have this unhealthy attachment to you that they're trying to let go of, okay? They feel like they're not full on their own. They're not... A full individual on their own and I feel like they put too much of their their dopamine their happiness their passions into other people ie you <laughs> okay um, whereas they really should be putting their passion and their energy towards things that are self-fulfilling you know things like travel hobbies career starting their own family living their own life i feel like they're like the shark so focused on other people like they get their happiness their fulfillment of life their their zing their thrill from other people and i feel like they almost view themselves as the shark person like what can i do to win them back and i think there is like a predatory thing with their behavior that they don't even realize like it's kind of creepy i'm not gonna lie like i i don't think they see this as a problem but like they're putting so much of their self-worth into you or they have done that that by losing you they don't view it as like oh they're free now like i should move on and live my own life they're thinking of it from this like hunting perspective like what can i do to get back with them what are they up to are they less happy without me like they're as they're they're attaching their self-worth with you so that's why it causes jealousy they're like oh are they happier without me and then that makes them jealous that makes them question their self-worth or like if you know you're posting online that you know you're going through a rough time you're not happy they're like oh yeah they would be happier with me i feel like you being very open about your happiness triggers them and so i feel guided to tell you like yes you group number three should be out here living your best life showing the whole world bragging about it and i think i honestly think the best thing for you if this resonates with somebody in your life might be to completely cut them off block them because their energy is kind of creepy like i don't like this <laughs> at all we also have doubt. Yeah, you put a lot of doubt in their heart, in their mind about themselves. Um, because, like we said, they attach so much of their self-worth to you. 
for some reason like and you broke their heart or you don't want to be with them whatever it happens you know not everybody's compatible and a normal person would pick up the pieces move on find someone else but like I don't know, I think they're just kind of keeping their eye on you out of heartbreak. Now guys, if you've recently gotten into a breakup with somebody, this could represent that person, and I think it's pretty normal. Like, the first few weeks after breaking up with someone, like, if they're still, like, thinking about you, keeping their eye on you, and trying to get over you, and they might have overly invested their self-worth to you, and so this was kind of a shock to them, and now they're kind of learning at this moment how to kind of move on and place their self-worth within themselves, and if they don't learn that lesson, they're eventually just going to repeat the same process with somebody else, where they're attaching too much of their self-worth to somebody else, and that's going to be another girl or boy's problem, okay? Not yours, but... I, I'm not I'm not trying to plant fear into your head like you should be terrified of this person especially if it's a more recent breakup because that would be normal this would be like normal behavior I would say um, not healthy behavior but normal you know but if you really just feel somebody from your far away past and their energy's like really lingering um, that could be a sign that they're a little obsessed with you like I'll give you an example um, Somebody I know who's very psychically aware and, you know, in tune with the spiritual realms, like, they just keep having these random dreams or these random, like, thoughts, like, just this feeling, really, that one of their old lovers is still just kind of lurking in their energy field, kind of lurking in their in their spirit, like spiritual stalking almost, okay? Like they're still keeping a really big eye on them, you know, really keeping up with them on social media, watching everything they do, asking mutual friends like what they're up to. And like, that's a feeling that you can feel. So if you feel like somebody is keeping an eye on you, even if there's no logical evidence to prove that, I mean, that is the psychic intuition, guys. That's what it feels like. And you know, a lot of people have, I, I would say everybody has psychic abilities, but the reason they don't identify as psychic is because whenever these intuitive nudges come up, they just deny it. Like, oh, well, that's not logically proven, so it must not exist. No, if you, I feel like you, group number three, can feel this person's presence, their spirit tugging at your energy cord. Okay, so pay attention to any dreams you have where random people from your past show up and you keep like, I wouldn't say it's like a repetitive dream, but like maybe they show up in your dreams like once every couple of months or weeks and you're like, why do they keep showing up? And it's always like an emotional dream or like, um... If, if you've just noticed certain weird behavior um, with how they interact with your social media or how they interact with mutual people you know and things like that, like I would just pay attention to that. Um, because I don't think this is necessarily somebody you want to have their eye on you, <laughs> okay? So yeah, I don't know. Could be good, could be bad. I'm not trying to make you guys fearful. I'm just saying like, you're definitely a heartbreaker. So. <laughs> You're bound to have some people who have a hard time getting over you because group three, you are just the bomb.com. You're beautiful. You have a lot to offer. You are very loving, um, empathetic, compassionate. I'm getting a lot of psychic spiritual energy from you. I feel like you're very mature, um, especially when it comes to emotions and relationships. And you're a whole catch. So, like, I feel like it's natural for you to, over time, perhaps accumulate one or two or a few people who <laughs> are butthurt that you don't have feelings for them. Okay? So, yeah. I would just, you know, again, if you're being stalked, or you think you're being stalked, that's something you should bring to the local authorities. We have walking away popped out out of the energy group. Why did I... I wasn't supposed to pull from this deck. I don't know why I had to shuffle this. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, but this is again, good confirmation that this is somebody you walked away from or somebody who's trying to walk away from you. I really hope this person can get over you. I'm not gonna lie because I, I don't like their presence in your energy field. And I feel like you don't like their presence in your energy field. It's kind of like, I just wish they would move on. So that way I could move on without being reminded. Okay, we have happy family coming out as well this might be somebody you got like a divorce from or maybe at some point in time you or them especially them envisioned like a, a future with you like a family um so that's that's interesting interesting stuff guys let me just adjust this camera 
Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to get some uh, physical traits and some personality characteristics. Uh, just as further confirmation for some of you guys, take what resonates, leave it if it doesn't. You know, this is kind of just like if something really sticks out to you, that's really good confirmation that that's the person we are talking about or it could even be your traits and characteristics, their traits and characteristics. Just take what resonates, leave anything that does not. We have brown or hazel eyes coming out. We have wavy or curly hair. We have nice. This might be a nice person. This could be somebody who's like the stereotypical nice guy that's actually like a giant misogynist douchebag. <laughs> or the nice girl who, you know, always is doing favors for friends and uh, just, you know, being so nice. But then at the end of the day, they're very resentful and have really poor boundaries and might be a little manipulative you know we've all met people like that i'd say same height or shorter than you okay so you guys might be around the same height or you or them might be slightly shorter i mean <laughs> i don't feel like there's any other option so <laughs> but you might be generally around the same height maybe um blue eyes or green eyes okay so maybe their eyes are hazel because we're getting both or maybe you have different colored eyes. We have insecure. Yep, I knew that one was going to come out. They're an insecure person. They do insecure things. This is somebody who has insecurities in themselves. They place their self-worth in you, in other people, which is why they're still hooked on you. Okay. And, you know, they're always coming across like, I'm this nice person. I do nice things. Blah, blah, blah. But they haven't done the inner healing work to love themselves. They're, they're, they're giving me big, like, people pleaser behavior. But, like also like big emotionally manipulative behavior okay i have met a lot of people like this you know they're always sitting here saying i'm doing all these favors for people but they always expect favors back you know it's not like a genuine like i'm being nice i'm giving you gifts i'm being nice like it's no like i'm doing this for you so i'm gonna expect something from you later like that's the type of energy i'm getting from them or like they'll do something nice for you and then turn it around on you later and be like oh well i do all this that the third for you and you just you know can't dress the way that i want you to dress and you go out like they're giving me that energy i don't like this person <laughs> i'm just being honest with you guys i do not like this person okay let's get some personality traits from them we have ro mm, didn't we say that earlier look at that romantic obsession twin flame question mark we literally said that earlier this person is low-key obsessed with you okay they think that you are their twin flame their end goal their end result which is why they're like low-key keeping their eye on you like kind of waiting to see if there's an opportunity to come back like a shark in the water just kind of lingering there watching you waiting like when is the opportunity when are when is group number three going to be in a vulnerable position where they're going to take me back okay when are they going to be single when are they going to be going through a rough time and posting about it on social media so i can swoop in and say oh my gosh i'm so sorry to hear that blah 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 like uh they're obsessed with you guys if you feel like somebody's obsessed with you they might be okay it's just that's all i'm gonna say they might be okay we have you knew e wait let me i'm trying to zoom zoom yes you knew each other in the past but weren't close i feel like you didn't let this get as close as they wanted to get with you okay like maybe you did date this person and they wanted this happy family this marriage and you saw the red flags and said no and i really feel like they didn't get as close as they wanted to you and that kind of left them with this feeling of well now i gotta get that now I gotta, you know, I'm getting a vision of um, James from Twilight. <laughs> My Twilight fans out there, you know, um, you know, he was this guy, they kind of ran into the Collins and Bella in the woods. He got a whiff of Bella, saw that, you know, Edward was super protective of her. And then it was like his mission to kill Bella, to like get a taste of her blood. And he literally like hunted her down till the end of the earth to, um, well, not to the end of the earth, to Arizona, <laughs> to get a taste of that blood and he didn't end up doing it successfully he ended up dying okay so I, I just feel like this person wanted something with you that was very deep they didn't get it and now they're still hooked on you and they feel disappointed like they feel like there was like an anti-climatic event of this connection that kind of left them with this romantic obsession and this is something it's called limerence okay look go to google and look up the word limerence 
That is what, actually, you know what? I'll do it for you. This is from Google. Limerence is a state of mind which results from romantic or non-romantic feelings for another person and typically includes obsessive thoughts and fantasies as well as a desire to form or maintain a relationship with the object of love and to have one's feelings reciprocated. That's from Wikipedia. Okay, so I'm reading all about limerence. Let me summarize it from you. Uh, this is from mindbodygreen.com, but it really just goes off to say that limerence is a romantic infatua infatuation, a deep obsession, um, and fantastical longing. This is someone who is imagining what they could have with you. Maybe you did flirt with them or date them for a little while and in their head, instead of getting to know the real, and everyone experiences a little bit of limerence in relationships, especially in the beginning where, you know, you start falling for this person and you're imagining like all the different possibilities that can go on. I feel like we've all experienced that, but when it's like full-blown limerence, this person is taking it to a whole nother level where they're not really seeing you for you. They're putting you on a pedestal and envisioning, you know, this big happy family that you guys can have. They're envisioning what could be, like marriage, kids, all that. And then you're sitting here trying to tell them who you are, what your boundaries are, and really bring them back down to earth and remind them that you're a complex human just as they are. But they're so in their daydreams that they're just like really envisioning this deep spiritual thing. And a lot of people who experience limerence think that it's a twin flame. They think that this is somebody who they're meant to be with and it turns into this romantic obsession and it can be a really big letdown when you leave someone or you break it off with somebody who is in limerence with you. Not in love with you, in limerence with you, okay? They sugarcoated the heck out of you. They think that you are a divine god or goddess here on earth. Uh, you're meant to be with them, you know? Uh, so yeah, they're having a hard time letting you go. Look at this phrase from this. Limerence can be a painful process to untangle yourself from because it's likely wrapped up in your sense of self, self-worth, and self-esteem as well. Yes, yes. This person is like, or was obsessed with you in a very daydreamy, this is what I feel like things could be type of way. And then life happened. You guys probably realized you're not that compatible and they're having a hard time letting you go now. They're in this process of deteriorization where they're having to accept like, oh, we're not a thing anymore. <laughs> or like, we have to move on, we have to walk away. This person is in this phase where they're finally trying to untangle this illusion that you guys are spiritually guided to be together and they have to, you know, move on. I, I feel like they're going to learn that one way or another. Old lover, yep, yep, but never in a relationship. Yeah, these are the vibes I was feeling so strongly. I feel like you had potential in this uh, connection with them to be something more. Okay, maybe you were in a relationship, but you weren't like married. Or maybe you were married, for some of you guys, you were even married, but you know, you saw red flags there, the relationship deteriorated and you guys divorced before you could like have that dream of kids or a home or whatever. Like I, I really do feel like for the majority of you though, like this is somebody you were seeing, maybe you were lovers with and you know, you were both hoping for a relationship, but it didn't happen because you guys aren't compatible and they were a little obsessed with you. I'm getting like clingy, desperate vibes here, okay? And they're probably a little manipulative, controlling, etc. And you know, now they're, they're having to learn like, they have to move on, okay? They have to move on. I wanna ask these Hera some questions. So what do you guys wanna know most about this person? Um, hmm. What does group number, oh, queen of wands. Yep, you just keep living your best life, uh, group number three. Don't give this person the time of day, okay? Like, the queen of wands is somebody who is on her throne. She has her business, her career. She's passionate about life. She's beautiful. You know, she has her cat. She has her garden. She is living her absolute best life, okay? Keep doing that. That's what you need to do. Just keep focusing on you. Don't worry about this person. I feel like they're not good for you, okay? I really think they're obsessed. Five of wands reverse. Any communication you have with this person is only going to end in more confusion towards the relationship, towards the situation. Situation. You guys aren't gonna, I, I just don't feel like this is a healthy, this is ever gonna turn into something healthy. Wheel of Fortune reversed, yeah. The big wheel is turning, time is a moving, time is ticking on. I feel like time is on your side when it comes to this person because the more time goes by, the more they will finally get over you. I feel like their presence in your aura, in your energy, isn't welcomed. I feel like they, the more they think about you, and the more they interact with you, the more they don't move on from you, 
it's only sending you negative energy and so group number three i really want you to do some protection rituals for yourself i really want you to get some amethyst to psychically protect your aura um you know do some spell work some light some candles for protection things like that i really want you to protect your aura and not allow this person in okay because here's the thing when they are thinking about you stalking your social media um asking about you that that's them like tapping into your energetic cord that's them getting in your energy cord shaking it a little bit which affects you as much as it affects them because they're sending you that energy of desperation clinginess not moving on you know they're they're shaking that up so i would say try to limit your contact with this person and you move on with your life to send the message that they have to move on with theirs because whatever you do in this connection they also feel the same way whatever they do you feel on a psychic 5d level so if you're over here living your best life moving on i feel like that's energetically sending the message to them that they have to move on as well okay so i would say do not like yeah page of cups reverse it's not worth it it's not worth it this person needs to let go of the romantic feelings for you this is a card of offering somebody your cup of love and having it rejected and i feel like they feel rejected by you they feel like you don't like them with good reason because they're weird they're clingy i don't like this person like i'm tuning into their energy and they really strike me as manipulative not mature semi-predatory i don't like that like uh i i don't like it okay and so this person has to learn the hard way like if they can't be an adult in a relationship if they can't you know be upfront and real with their feelings and work on their self-esteem and make sure that they're approaching relationships from a place of i love myself and i love you rather than i'm attaching all my self-worth into you and therefore i have to control you to control my self-worth like no no insecurity is one of the biggest red flags guys because here's the thing if somebody's insecure uh, oh my god especially when they're attaching their worth to you they're always going to end up being a controlling person or a manipulative person because everybody needs that healthy sense of self-worth self-esteem to be happy and so when they're attaching their self-worth to you they're going to be having some very like controlling behaviors i feel like this person is controlling i'm happy you didn't end up with them i feel like it is divine protection that you didn't end up with this person and you know they're, they're gonna have to learn to move on from you and the best way they can do that is if you move on okay so i want you guys to go out and live your best life fall in love with other people you know create beautiful friendships relationships a career your passions etc do not give in to this person do not shake up their energy cord okay and that's not just like don't talk to them that's also like don't subtweet about them don't post things when you know they're watching that will trigger them like just don't worry about them anymore i think you need to move on as much as they need to move on i feel like you yes you might not have these feelings for them that they have for you but i also think that you need i i feel like there's a part of you that still lingers in this connection because there's a part of them that lingers in this connection and somebody's got to move on okay or at least pretend like they're moving on because i i don't like this all right i don't like this at all all right i did not like this reading this reading made me uncomfortable i am wishing you all the best go do some protection spells go get yourself a beautiful this is my permission for you to buy yourself a beautiful um bracelet necklace or ring that will help protect your aura your energy okay you deserve it okay uh, live your best life this person is not worth your time or day. They are obsessed with you. You are a heartbreaker. But this only goes to show how awesome you are, guys. <laughs> like, you are a doll. You are, you know, the one that got away. All right? I understand their feelings because you're awesome. I would be upset, too, if you rejected me. Like, you're the bomb. So, I love you, <laughs> okay? Like this video. Comment your thoughts and feelings down below. I'd love to hear, like, your story if you're comfortable sharing it and subscribe if you have not already bye and finally group number four let's see who has their eye on you we have them being represented as the crow this is a very magical mystical animal and having the crow spirit here really shows that your person might be somebody who really reads into the subtler side of life they might read a lot into your body language the little things that you do or say they're just a very highly perceptive person and i also feel like there is part of this person who is a bit on edge like they don't fully show 
their fullest intelligence, their fullest self, unless they feel 100% comfortable in a committed connection. I don't know why I felt guided to say that, but there it is. Also with the crow here, this person um, is very highly intelligent, perceptive, all those good things because the error quality here really represents intelligence, the ability to, to see situations very clearly and pick up on the littlest of things that go on. You know, birds in general are really good at seeing all the little details from above. They can see the full picture, but they can also zoom in to see the littlest tiny details, you know, like hawks, for example, they can see a whole like mile long radius, but they can also like crystal clear see a tiny little mouse scurrying in the ground. So they're highly perceptive and this person really takes note of all the little things about you and picks up on all the little things so if there's anyone around you who you noticed has like a really good memory when it comes to you like they remember things that you say or like they'll bring up things that you say they'll remember your name your story all that stuff chances are they are interested in you so i would say pay attention to anybody who is like that in your life i'm also seeing this crow spirit as a part of you group number four you are this psychic highly perceptive highly intelligent being who and i, I also want to point out that this came out in reverse so i feel like you and the person who has their eye on you are probably very similar but like you're both it really much oh my god what am i trying to say you're both in need of grounding your energies by you know taking time to focus on your friends having a healthful diet enough sleep things like that might be getting in the way of your connection and making this connection a bit more ungrounded so i really feel like if this is for example somebody you are interested in who has their eye on you as well and you feel like the relationship is not moving forward as quickly on the 3D level as you would like it to. So for example, you guys might be very like telepathically aware that you have your eyes on each other, um, but you're not really seeing much growth in the actual physical world in this life. So, you know, you have feelings, you know, you're both like really reading into each other's behaviors, body languages, subtle signs and synchronicities. I feel like you're very in tune with each other on a very spiritual level, but you're not really seeing that quick, um, growth on the physical level, it's because you both need to ground your energies a bit more. When this card comes out in reverse, it really shows some unbalanced crow energy, which asks for you to not be hyper fixated on this person, on this relationship. Remember to hang out with your other friends. Remember to go after your goals, take care of your health. I feel like the more you focus on your self-love and making sure that you are a whole person, the more this connection can come into fruition. So if you really have been wanting to manifest this relationship with this person who, and really just take whoever resonates with this message, like if anyone specific comes to mind, um, really that's, that's the sign that that's them. But if you want to manifest this connection on a physical level, you both have to really put in the work towards yourselves and make sure you're approaching this connection from a grounded, holistic level that you're both your fullest versions and you can move forward together. I don't know why off the bat, just the intuitive feelings that I'm getting here. I really like this person. I like this connection for you. And I see a lot of like longer term potential with you and this person. And I know that's very quick to say, we didn't even get into the other cards yet, but I don't know, it's just an energy, it's just a feeling. And I feel like a lot of you guys are quite apprehensive about this connection because you're both so perceptive to the littlest things but you're not seeing that growth on the physical level. But Spirit's kind of saying like, take this connection slow and make sure that you are still focusing on you and not losing yourself in the idea of this connection. You know how sometimes we can really fall for somebody and we daydream about them nonstop and it distracts us from our real life or maybe you just want to talk to them all the time, hang out with them all the time and then you neglect your other friends and responsibilities spirits trying to prevent that from happening because i feel like for either you the other person or both of you you might have been the type of person who kind of gets into relationships head over heels and you know which would cause a bit of limerence and a bit of codependency and a bit of toxicity so if you or this person has a history of any of those things it's good to take things slow and you know gradually build up this connection on a physical level but in the meantime just make sure you're staying grounded go see your other friends work on your other responsibilities while still talking to this person and getting to know them more we have the world card coming out here they think you're the world this is a really good card too because this is they really see you as like this whole person and i'm seeing them as this person down here viewing you so they're seeing you and they're like, I really want to be a part of their world. I really want to be 
a part of their life and I feel like they are at a bit of a distance from you at this time like maybe they're not fully like a main character in your story but they want to be and they're kind of just viewing you living your best life um, with your friends your responsibilities your hobbies like whatever it is that you do I feel like they're kind of just seeing you from an outsider's perspective and thinking to themselves gosh I really want to be there I really want to be a part of that person's life story like I want to be a part of these stories and you know maybe if this is someone you are like dating and getting closer to at this time maybe like they meet your friends and you guys are sharing your stories with each other like reminiscing and they're just kind of standing there like listening to everybody and they're just thinking to themselves i really wish i knew these stories i wish i had these insiders with this person and time will naturally build those things that's not something we need to force here by any means but i i really get this feeling that this person really does like you and they really want to be closer to you they want to be a part of their of your world but at the same time, I feel like they're emotionally intelligent enough to realize that that just doesn't happen overnight. And if it does happen overnight, usually, like, that usually doesn't end up well. Like, overnight love stories usually go down in a ball of flames, <laughs> statistically speaking. So I feel like they're willing to give this connection time. And I think that is the mark of a true soulmate connection, where... Yes, the beginning might feel a little bit slow, a little bit drawn out, um, but you really just let things happen naturally and progress naturally. And that usually adds to something more long lasting, at least from my experience. So they really want to be a, more a part of your life. Oh my gosh, yes, we have the sixth chakra, Archangel Metatron. This is the third eye chakra, guys. Yeah, this is a very spiritual union here. And I feel like you're a person gets this almost like telepathic energy from you like maybe they think about you and then you call them or text them or maybe they have a dream about cantaloupes and then you post a cantaloupe on your story i don't know <laughs> like there's some type of spiritual element here uh with the crow with the sixth chakra like or maybe it's just that maybe the first time you hung out with them, they got this sense of like deja vu, like you were supposed to be there. I, I, I just feel like even if they're not a spiritually minded person, there is a part of them that almost feels like it's such a big coincidence that you guys met, that you guys have this thing. Like I feel like it's almost like they view you like we're meant to be together. Like this is my person. I mean, they don't view you like, oh, that's my person, like in a very like controlling way but it's just more so like wow this is someone i really like this is someone i really can see something with and it almost feels faded and maybe a part of how you met each other was faded like maybe like coincidentally it was very unlikely that the two of you would meet like maybe you met on vacation for something or something like that for example and you just so happened to like meet at the grocery store one day or you just I don't know like something like that something faded something unusual okay maybe you come from very different parts of the world and you somehow managed to find each other and it's I don't know they just get this sense that something more divine is at work here with your connection um that's a really good card to pull out and they also feel very connected to you through the third eye um, in a very psychic telepathic way or maybe this is also a pretty big sign that they could have dreams about you that they might have told you about or maybe not um, but you know you guys are very connected on the higher realm so the astral planes you might have dreams about each other excuse me um, your higher selves might talk to each other a lot and you guys would know that like because you might have like these random daydreams where you're talking to this person or they're talking to you and i feel like that's your actual higher selves um interacting now we don't want to get lost in the daydreams we don't want to get lost in the higher versions of ourselves and that aspect of the connection because we did after all come here to be human and so i feel like we shouldn't lose ourselves in limerence we shouldn't lose ourselves in daydreams you know there is aspects of this connection that need to be grounded and we do see that in the crow as well coming out reversed this connection is at a point where it really needs to be grounded down into reality. Like, I feel like you guys are totally compatible in the 5D realm, like telepathically connected. Your higher souls know each other. I am almost positive that you guys have past lives together. This is soulmate energy, okay? And so that's fine and dandy, but you know, we need to bring this down into physical reality and that takes time. That takes, you know, talking to each other regularly, going out regularly, and letting time do its thing, letting time build this connection up and build these insiders, these stories to reminisce on, the things that they want with you. I feel like they're a very simple person. <laughs> they really just want to have memories with you. They just want more of your time and energy. Okay, very simple, very sweet. 
Um, and, and I feel like they really do want to bring this further down into reality. We have appreciation, which is again, very similar to what we said with the world card here. This is you um, just living your life, doing your own thing. You know, I feel like you're just this person who kind of just does your own thing. You know, you're not really somebody who gossips a lot or focuses too much energy on other people. Like you really understand that, you know, to live a fulfilling life, you have to have your own hobbies and passions and purpose and you know, all, all of those things. You have your dreams, you have your goals, you know? I feel like you're pretty self-sufficient, um, pretty much, you know, I don't think you're insecure. I don't think you are, or at least not in like a major way. I don't think you are desperately clinging on to love. I think you're really just living your life and they see you and you, they see that and they appreciate you because when you're in this state of self-love, just literally making your life as happy as possible, that's when you're at your absolute most attractive. And I feel like they're almost feeling like a bit of an outsider in your life right now. Although I'm also seeing this person like looking straight at us, see? So I, I feel like we're viewing this from their perspective. Like they're over here and they're looking at you who's looking at this flower, appreciating your life, right? And then you're kind of like glancing back at them and they're like, oh, do they see me? Can I go up and talk to them? Can I be a part of their life? Can I be a part of the people that they appreciate? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like this is a connection where this person has very deep respect for you and they really just appreciate you and your life. And they, I'm just getting this sense that they want to be a part of your life more so than they currently are. They want to be a bigger character in your story. They want to possibly be a main character in your story, you know? Like they just want to see life with you because the life that you have built for yourself from the outside looking in looks so beautiful, magical, abundant, in tune with nature, in tune with yourself, um, very mature, very amazing you know you built a really cool life for yourself and and i feel like you're attracting people who are kind of looking at your life and wanting to be a part of it and that is how you become attractive like in the empress card in tarot the wisdom here is like when you create a life that's beautiful for yourself other people can see your life as a work of art and think to themselves i want to be a part of that and that's how you become more abundant because then you have more people things energies that want to be a part of your life and it goes beyond just humans this also has to do with like you know other blessings like maybe um you create a beautiful energy that surrounds you beautiful friends beautiful absolutely stunning energy okay completely aligned with love and light and peace and all that stuff even the spirit of objects will want to be in your life so maybe like a really nice mansion will really want you to live in them and they you know energetically give you the resources so that you can live in them you know what i'm saying like you don't become more attractive just to people by loving yourself and creating a beautiful life for yourself you also become more attractive to objects opportunities all that stuff but this is kind of beyond the point that was just something i wanted to share with you guys i feel like the more you kind of like love yourself and create beauty for yourself and your life and treat your life as an art um, the more this person falls in love with you, okay? Which is why if you want to empower this relationship and you're, I really do see you're like looking back at this person. I feel like you might have some feelings for them as well. Um, I feel like if you want to bring this down into a more physical level, there's some different messages here for you. A, let time do its thing. There's no rush. B, keep on loving yourself. Don't lose yourself in this relationship um, because they are more and more attracted to you the more beauty you create for yourself. And I feel like you would feel the same way about them. The more beauty they have for themselves in their life, the more independent and, and handsome or beautiful and you know, having their own little life for themselves, the more you're like, oh, I wanna be a part of that too. You know, nobody is like really attracted to somebody who's like desperately clingy and has nothing going on for themselves. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you're the opposite. Like you have a beautiful life for yourself and everyone wants to be a part of it. <laughs> We have being enough. Wow, so cute. The innermost heart says you are enough. Nowhere to go, nothing to get, nothing to change. No need to grow, more deserving. You, yes, you are love. I absolutely adore how this person feels about you because I feel like they don't want to change you. They are literally just looking at you and admiring you for who you are. They don't want you to change. They just want to be a part of that life. And I feel like they do have some questions within themselves. They have their own inner healing work to do around being enough. Like, am I enough for them? Because I, I think they might be putting you ever so slightly on a pedestal, but not in like a problematic way, but just in a, you know, this is something they have to work through type of way. Um, 
because I, I just feel like they have this very profound respect for you and they question if they are enough for you, you know? They're viewing you as this beautiful sun goddess or god and they're viewing themselves as this dark, uh, brooding person. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we have solitude, yeah. I, I was getting a bit of loner vibes from them um, as well. Once you embrace the inner divine and your own sacred solitude, the right people arrive at the right time, exactly on schedule, without forcing or chasing. I feel like this person um, gives off a bit of loner energy, okay? Or just they enjoy their alone time. You know, they are a bit deep, a bit brooding, third eye open. I feel like people who are like that tend to spend more time alone because it's in solitude that we really can open up this third eye and see the deeper aspect of life and really dive deep into what the deeper meaning of life is and what the deeper meaning of relationships are. And so, I don't know, I feel like this person enjoys their solitude and I feel like they're extremely attracted to you because I don't know if you're introverted or extroverted, but like, I feel like either way, you're fine with being on your own. Like you're a woman or man of independent means and that's what they find attractive. Like you're not like emotionally clingy or desperate. You kind of just do your own thing. And you know, if people want to be a part of your life, they're a part of your life if you want them there. And I think they find that extremely beautiful, but I don't know. I feel like they're kind of wondering how they can enter your life um, in a more sub substantial way. We have body. Okay, straight up. They think you are hot. <laughs> That's what I'm getting from this card. Okay. Not only do they deeply respect you, but they also want to deeply disrespect you in all the right ways. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what that body do? Show me divine how to love and fully care for this body. Please give me the radiant miracle of accepting my body as it is. Yeah, they don't want to change a gosh darn thing about you. I feel like they're very very attracted to you <laughs> on a physical, mental, spiritual level. I think the problem comes in with like, how am I going to, um, you know, work with that? Like, what am I going to do with these feelings? So guys, next I, I dropped the thing. Gosh darn it. I want to um, select some little handmade oracle cards. So these are going to be physical traits um, that you or your person has. That will just be some additional confirmation for some of you. If it doesn't resonate, don't take it, but maybe some of these really stick out to you. Um, so yeah, just take with it what you will. We have, okay, a lot came out, so bear with me. We have narcissist or toxic. So they might have a history um, with people who are like that, which is why they are taking things a little bit slow. We saw that earlier. We have older than you. This person is most likely older than you, and whether it's a day or... 10 years, I don't know. Straight hair. And if any of these don't really resonate, then they might not. Nice, they're just a nice person, okay? They're a really nice person. Um, they have nice things to say about you. They respect you. I really did see that like level of like respect, niceness, you know? They're not looking to be toxic. And sometimes that might self-sabotage them because they're so concerned about being nice, being, you know, um, having your consent and stuff, which, you know, yes, that's correct, but like they might over go overboard to the point where it's like, I don't want to bother them, I don't want to like flirt with them if they don't want it, like that's the type of energy I'm getting from them. I feel like they're a little bit so nice that they are shy when it comes to flirting because in the off chance that you reject them, like they don't want to like be a bother, you know, that's how deeply they think about these things. <laughs> we have mean, wow, what a contradiction. Huh, I wonder, I, you know what's funny, we have mean narcissist, and I'm putting all of the like neutral to nice traits over here and then these shadow aspects over here. Brown or black hair, hometown, so they might live where you live, live near you, or you might be from the same hometown, but this is really giving me the sense that this is not a long-term, or not long-term, oh my god, long-distance connection. Um, for like the majority of you, this will not be long distance. They live pretty close to you. We have androgyny or non-binary. So, and I think I spelled this wrong, so don't judge me. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so this person, um, yeah, I, I do get this like solitude energy, this being enough, um, this mystical, deep thinking energy from them. I feel like this is the type of person who is very respectful. You know, they're not one of those people who care about gender norms, for example. Like, if they want to wear the color pink and they're a man, they're going to wear the color pink. If they want to dress in a suit to a formal event as a woman, they're going to do that. Like, this person doesn't care about those things, um, which is great. I love that. Um, and, you know, yeah. 
or they might have like some form of like androgyny about them where like you know they're not afraid to have long hair if they're a man for example or I don't know you, you get the point I really like that though I like people who you know don't care about the surface level stuff like that they just want to let their personality and their personal style shine through so yeah I want to know why the mean let's get some clarifying cards before we continue why did mean a narcissist or toxic come out for this person because the energy I'm feeling for them isn't that bad I feel like if anything they don't want to be that maybe they're overly focused on that yeah okay five of cups this is talking about someone from their past that's a pretty clear clarification there they've probably okay so th I'm getting two messages they've dealt with a narcissist or toxic relationship in the past or they feel like they might have been that in the past okay I'm getting a message here if this is a man that you're asking about I feel like they might have been a little bit sexist in the past or had some like misogynistic um traits which which honestly guys a lot of people have whether they realize it or not and I feel like they might look back at their past behaviors and think wow I was such a scumbag back then they probably were a bit of a player but not in like a in a good way like you know casual sex is fine or whatever as long as you're respectful about it but I feel like in the past they might have been somebody who didn't go about it in the most respectful way possible you know I feel like in their, their past they perceived themselves as somebody who was like a bit toxic or a bit like misogynist or a bit mean okay or like codependent getting into some type of toxic connections in the past and they're trying to heal from that right now which is why this connection might be moving a bit slower on the physical level and guys we don't have to like here's the thing about relationships you're not going to ever find somebody who's gonna be absolutely perfect all right everyone has their baggage everyone has some level of things that they're healing from and when we get into romantic relationships especially that tends to bring out some baggage that needs to be healed in the beginning of relationships it can be a very vulnerable time for a lot of people where they're might be overthinking like I don't want to hurt this person I don't want to create something codependent or or narcissistic or anything like that or toxic like they're really trying to avoid that they're overthinking it and so they might hold you a bit at a distance but you know if they're you know slowly moving things forward with you and that's what you want then I would say it's fine there's nothing to worry about but yeah I, I feel like they're overly concerned about coming off as a mean person they're overly concerned about offending you they don't want to offend you they don't want to annoy you in any way that's what i'm really seeing here from this reading like they're extremely worried about that even if they're the nicest person in the world i feel like because of their past they view themselves as someone prone to toxicity or somebody who needs to be extra careful about those things i feel a lot of regret that they carry towards themselves for who they were in the past. But honestly, if they're able to feel that regret, then that shows me that they're a changed person. So I don't know. I feel like this person struggles with understanding that they are enough and they're intelligent. And if they've done the inner healing work, then they don't need to carry this guilt from their past anymore. You know what I'm saying? So these are some more personality traits or relationship characteristics that might stand out to you. Again, take what resonates, leave anything that doesn't. We have a former friend showing up here. I'm getting a sense of an air of friendliness between you guys. And I really feel like they do view you as somebody they want to be friends with, even if they want to be romantic with you, which is what I'm definitely seeing. I feel like they really just respect you and want, and enjoy the friendship aspect of this connection equally as much as any potential romantic aspect of it. Like, I feel like this is somebody who's not, like if you rejected them, for example, and said, I don't want anything to do with you, I feel like they won't, try to force you into anything or be like one of those butt hurt people who are like oh well f you and then walk off like no they would still want to be friends with you we have jealous coming out here <laughs> i do think like this for i wouldn't pin this person down as a jealous person but i do think they want to be closer to you which can create a sense of jealousy because again we have this feeling and i don't think it's like a toxic jealousy i think it's like they're looking at your life and wanting to be a part of it type of jealousy like they're jealous that they aren't closer to you but i'm not really picking up for most of you guys that this is a toxic type of jealousy 
we have a stranger. Okay, so we have stranger and former friend. So this person, again, wants to be closer to you. I'm getting a sense of not too close right now. We have, you do not like this person. Mm, that's an interesting one to come out. And we have a little creepy. Hmm. Okay, so for some of you guys, you might genuinely not like this person. Okay, but I really don't think that's the majority of you. I think that this is what they think that you think about them. You feel me? Did you pick up what I put down? Like, they are so fearful of coming off as creepy. They're fearful of you not liking them. So that's why they're acting very shy about their feelings. You understand? <laughs> so <laughs> this person is an overthinker, like right off the bat. Like they are super obsessed with this, not obsessed, but like they're overly concerned, sorry, about how you perceive them. They really do not want to do the wrong thing, act in a wrong way that will make you hate them. Like they're extremely focused on that right now and it's almost getting in the way of this connection moving forward on a more physical level. Because for example, they might think to themselves, oh, well, I wanna approach them and tell them just how much I feel for them. But then they think to themselves, oh, well, what if they don't feel the same way? That's really creepy. Like, and you know what? I've actually been here before, so I don't blame this person. But like, sometimes if you have a lot of feelings, and the other person is a very independent person who, you know, has their own life going on for them. It can be scary to just, you know, open up about your feelings, especially if the other person hasn't opened up yet. You know, like it's scary to be like, I really, really like you when there's no like crystal clear confirmation that this person also likes you. And yeah, the justice card came out in reverse as confirmation. The reason why they're not being truthful and honest and authentic, like 100% about their feelings for you and why they have their eye on you is because they're afraid of it not being reciprocated. When the justice card comes out in reverse, it's a sign of not equal treatment. So they're really afraid, like really afraid that you do not have the same amount of feelings. Um, that they have towards you, okay? Like that's their biggest fear and that's what's getting in the way. So what can group number four do in this situation? 10 of cups reversed. I think that if you like this person back, I think you just gotta tell them. <laughs> I, I think it might be a best bet or like subtly like give them signs that you like them and that you want something more. Now, if you actually don't like this person, um, I would also make that very clear as well. Like don't give them false hope. Because I feel like this situation is moving forward very slowly, but like little by little. And the more signs that you give them that you like them and are interested in them, I feel like the more they'll open up to you about their feelings. So if you don't like this person and they're like a friend or former friend or acquaintance and you're getting this vibe that they have something for you and you don't reciprocate those feelings, make that clear. <laughs> make that very clear to them. Okay, we have the sun reversed. Yeah, so we have two really good cards in reverse, which isn't a big deal. Both of these cards in reverse isn't taking away from this happiness, okay? This is really just saying like, if you want it, you can have it, group number four. I feel like this person really likes you, wants to be a part of your world, wants to be a main character in your world. This is like, I want to potentially be a life partner with you, have kids together. There's two kids here, there's a house, there's happiness, all that good stuff. Like there's some pretty serious feelings involved here with this person um they're just not showing all of it you know they're kind of keeping it a bit contained right now because they respect you they don't want to bombard you with feelings um and you know also they're not 100 percent sure if you reciprocate them so yeah <laughs> whoever this whoever came to mind with this reading that's who we are talking about they definitely have their eye on you though have some pretty serious feelings here but also some you know past baggage that they need to overcome um, along the way. So thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you for the next one. Bye.